I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. Consult a professional investment advisor before making any investment decisions. This show is for entertainment only. Faites vos propres recherches. Here we are. In another episode. And the Simple Success Podcast. And this is Financial Life Coaching from a Happiness Perspective. For those who are not in the know, what's credit history? It's a record of how you handle debt and money. This includes and is not limited to credit card accounts and other loans. That's interesting. I'm thinking, this is my money in my life. Why should other individuals and institutions be all up in my business? Because money and debt are transactional between individuals and institutions. We don't function in a vacuum. I get it. Credit history informs, guides, and protects me. Just as it does other individuals and institutions that I have dealings with. Yes, that's part of the point. Credit history tells you how much you weigh in dollars, which you'll find on any credit report from any of the three major credit bureaus. Before we talk about the importance of credit history, would you please debunk some of the credit score myths? Gladly, DT. And I'll pass the ball right back to you by asking, what are some of these myths you're talking about? Is it true that checking my credit score lowers my credit score? I had a feeling this is the first myth you'd want me to debunk. And by the way, it's false. This is the most common myth there is. I'm glad that it's false. And I hope this truth will be the beginning of that which sets you free. Not only sets me free, but also stops this lie dead in its tracks. Listen, DT, monitoring your score helps you track progress when building credit. But it is important to check it the right way. In fact, a few years ago, I made a complete document I called How to Ruin Your Credit. That was a joke name, right? Sort of. It was kind of a joke, but it's free to download and it can answer a lot of your really important questions. So it is sort of. Well, sort of true. You mean there's a right and a wrong way? Checking your credit score is considered a soft pull, quote unquote, which doesn't necessarily affect your credit score. Thanks, John. I didn't know that. You're welcome, my friend. Actions such as applying for a credit card, which requires what's called a hard pull, quote unquote, does temporarily ding your credit score, sometimes more than exceeding your credit limit. I get it. It's not going hard like when I'm hitting the weights. Does carrying a balance on my credit card boost my credit score? No, that doesn't happen either. It's another myth we need to debunk. Carrying a balance on your credit card only has the potential to hurt it, which is one of the big credit risks. Please explain. It's because of two reasons. One, it will end up becoming expensive over time, paying interest. Now, that's the obvious part. And two, it's a waste of money to pay interest on your balance if you can afford to pay off your credit card bill in full every month. I know that a credit score is a number from uh, 300, I think, to 850. Uh, Yeah, that represents a consumer's credit worthiness. But What's one metric that's used in calculating a credit score? One of them is credit utilization. That is the percentage of available credit you're currently using. For example, if you have a credit line of $5,000 and you're using $2,500, then you have a 50% utilization rate. $2,500 is 50% of $5,000. That's simple. I outline this and the others in that paper I mentioned earlier, and I'm happy to let people download it if they ask. So, the trick is in using my available credit, not closing it, right? Correct. It's never advisable to close a credit account that is not being used, because doing so might lower your credit score. Keep your score as high as you possibly can. And why is that important? Because it makes you look good in the eyes of potential lenders, which is a tool you'll be able to use. Do you have stories of people who have used their credit history to better their lives? I have millions of stories. I could go on for 10 lifetimes. Excellent point oh artificial bot voice. We have a fraction of a single lifetime, John, so just give me one story. I will, my friend. 
but first, let's go for break number one. Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast, financial life coaching from a heaviness perspective, because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us. Please head over to the support link in our written show notes. That's the words on your podcast player. There, you can choose from a $9.99 per month doing level of support, a $4.99 knowing level, or a basic intro level of just $0.99 cents per month. Great place to start, whichever you choose. Thank you so much for helping us do this for you. And to leave us a voice message, which just might see the light of day in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes. You'll go to a site where you can leave a video, audio, or text-only message, depending on how you feel at the moment. You can also send us an audio file attached to an email if you use just more than your phone for stuff. I won't repeat those links because weird. And anyway, show notes. It's all in there and it's all easy. In the previous section, we touched a little bit on the importance of credit history. But now I want us to go deeper. DT, I am ready with all my drilling gear to do that going deeper thing. Now that I think about it, I realize that without a credit history, lenders wouldn't know how to evaluate my probability of paying a loan in a timely manner. That's right. I'm glad you've seen that. Lenders want to protect themselves from losses as they should, as you would if you were lending. And, and you might in the future. And, at least in theory, they want me to have the best of their financial resources. Yeah, it works both ways. It's supposed to be a win-win situation. You win by getting credit, and the lender wins by getting interest for giving you that credit. I think that's one importance of credit history. Lenders, knowing if I qualify for a loan. You're right about that, DT. Try and walk a mile in the lender's shoes. You apply for a loan, and they know nothing about you at first, except maybe your social security number. That would be a hard nut to crack. And there would be tons of people defaulting. Not to mention, this would lead to financial institutions crumbling job losses and possible financial instability. Well, for those people, yes. There you go, my friend. You sound sort of like a financial analyst. That's the effect of hanging out with you. You've created a monster, you fat tub of lard. Oh, Shakespeare. See, such a seemingly small thing as credit history can have far-reaching effects, which can economically destabilize us. I see it now. Thanks for that eye-opening lesson. What's the other importance of credit history, you rotting cow? For Shakespeare? Well, that's enough of that for now. The answer to your question is, it can determine whether or not you rent a house. How is that even possible, John? It all goes back to what we've talked about. They, there's the they we're going to get over, want to determine whether or not you can pay your rent and make any other time payments. Paying your bills on time, it's a pretty big deal, you know. It helps keep a strong credit score. Oh, I get it. Just remember how much you hate the false they, people. Correct. Noted. Landlords may review your credit score when you apply for an apartment lease. So, if that ever happens to me, I should not think I'm being persecuted as the landlord is just protecting their asset. Gefarblish. Huh? That's sim speak for you've taken the words right out of my mouth. Oh, shorter. That's cool. And I see where they're coming from. If I were a landlord, I would want to know that a tenant will meet their financial obligations. I'm glad that you flipped the script and looked at the situation from a landlord's perspective. That's how we can all overcome the they thing. Personify it. Yeah, sometimes we have to change our point of view to gain a better understanding of an issue. What's the other importance of credit history? Insurance companies might use your credit history info when they're setting your insurance rates. In fact, they probably will. Yeah, it seems there's no escaping credit history. Nor should there ever be. Moo ha ha. So, if I have a good credit score, I will get better insurance rates, right? Probably, yeah. Is there another thing of importance with credit history? There is. Utility companies may pay attention to credit risk when you set up the account. Why would they do that? To decide whether a security deposit is required along with your application for credit. 
From the things you have said, you make it sound like credit history is a big brother or a guardian of sorts. What do you mean? Big brother. That refers to a person, a government, or an organization that has complete control over people and is always checking what they do. And a guardian? Another word for big brother, at least in a lot of books. Okay, well, that's a bit of a stretch, DT, but I know what you mean. We do have freedom with our finances, and we also have freedom to make financial decisions. But... But freedom also comes with responsibilities. And we must agree that there are people who will not be able to honor their end of their financial obligations. But sometimes this happens due to unavoidable circumstances. Yeah, I agree. But still, there must be checks and balances to protect all parties. Credit history is such a check and balance. Speaking of checks and balances... That reminds me of the time I was denied a loan by a financial institution. Why did they do that? Credit reporting? Or the credit reporting process? They said it had something to do with my payments. About a loan I had taken from another bank years ago. Did you default on that payment? No, I did not pay the loan in the time they wanted. Oh, well, that can happen. It's just another reason you should strive to keep your debt balances low. Why? Well, so you can pay them off quickly if you need to. Can we talk more about this matter? We will talk about that in a little bit. But first, break number two. We know a lot about you already because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to a hard podcast. We also know that you probably know how to subscribe. So as soon as you're done with that, tell us your story. We have ways you can contact us. It involves a special link where you can leave us a message. We may have an email address for you as well in the future, and we'll let you know if that happens. The reason for subscribing? I thought you'd never ask. When you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. It just happens in your player without you having to go search again. How cool is that? This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And this means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe today, whatever app and from whatever place you like. And don't just try to subscribe. There is no try. There is only do. We're changing the way we look at things. And remember, that's good. Eso es bueno, civil. Also remember, this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. Our call to action is right in the show notes. Find it and you win too. Can I simple that? Por supuesto. Of course. Just simple it. Please make sure your seat belts are fastened and your tray tables are in their upright position. And make sure simple is a verb like Google is a verb. This section is going to be good, John. That breaks your get you pumped. But why do you say this section is going to be good? Because during the break, I connected some dots and it is now coming together. Oh, good. Well, what is this it that's all coming together? It's how investing and credit history are tied together. I know I don't need to remind you that we're in the section where we tie the big message to investing. You're right. You don't need to remind me. I know where we're at, DT. But since you're all pumped up and have joined some dots, I'll let you go first. What have you learned about credit transactions? What's the goal of credit risk? If I need a loan for an investment, I will increase my chances of getting the loan if my credit score is high. True. Smart investors never let this fact escape their minds. And DT, you're smart too. Thanks, John. That affirmation means a lot. You're welcome, my friend. To add to what I said, I have found out on the issue of investing, one's history can determine their future. If I have a great credit history, my investing future can be great. It can, but only if you also make the right choices with the loan. Don't forget that. Choices have consequences. I've got it. I like how you've put it that one's history is tied to their future. That's a quote that's worth tweeting. Can you share with us what you've learned? Yes. You can be smart and take out a credit builder loan. What's that? Instead of receiving the money up front, like a traditional loan, money from a credit builder loan goes into a dedicated account. And that's how this credit builder loan works? As you make payments over a fixed period to match the amount of the loan, the lender reports the payments to credit agencies to help you establish credit. And then? And once you pay off the loan, 
you receive the money. That's a great idea, John. I didn't know there was such a thing as a credit builder loan. And you're not alone. Most people don't know that. There are so many people who just don't know these things. And the good thing is that it's not rocket science. Yeah, it's something anyone can do. But if you don't have the knowledge, you are severely limited. John, in the first section, you said you have millions of stories of folks who have used their credit history to better their lives. Yeah, I remember. But millions of stories? Are you exaggerating? DT, millions might be exaggeration, but you need not look any further than your next door neighbor, the guy who runs your gym, the folks running mom and pop shops you go to. They know what I'm talking about. They pay attention to their payment history, and they have a strong credit history. Oh, I get it. You mean ordinary people. This is true significance. That's what I mean. I'm talking about ordinary, everyday people who have used their credit history to invest, purchase homes, and start income-generating activities. That gives credit a good name, right? Right. To some who don't know how this works, credit has caught a bad reputation. Now you're making me feel like I can do the impossible. You can do the impossible, DT. First, though, you need to change your mentality, then get cracking and just do it. I'm going to build my credit history by doing the right things and making the right choices. Good. Now, what's brought about this instant change? When you said you had millions of examples, I thought you were talking about some unattainable super rich people. But when you said the stories were of ordinary folks, I got it. Excellent. That was what I was going for. And I don't want to raid on your parade. I just want us to be realistic. I'm listening. And I don't mind some showers. Well, that's good because... Building credit history is not an overnight job. You will have to be responsible with your finances. I'm ready. Plus, it takes time and effort. I was born ready, John. Good. Hey, don't keep this knowledge to yourself. Spread it around to others, please. This is one time when utilization rate is a good thing. Utilizing this information. I will, John. You can bet your bottom dollar that I will. You're right. You will. And that will be because you've practiced and repeated, and as a result, you have a healthy credit score. Right. I keep favorable loan terms by paying my debts on time. Which is how you've all gotten good. Gracias por escuchar. Salut. A la prochaine. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries, the supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes Techno King, John C. Brandy, Alter Ego, Doubting Thomas, Fact Checker, a small brown beef animal, very very small, seriously, tiny, facts really are not that big, French Consultant, Open AI, Social Manager, Virginia Mitchell, Media Expert, Favor Abassi E.K., Psychologist, William James, Rabbit Hole Advisor, Dr. Mark Perrot, Sound Designer, Adobe's Creative Suite, Spanish Consultant, Cameron J.K. Brandy, Video Graha, Eto Moon Koshki, Audio Props, Les Paul, Inspiration, Many Podcasts and Other Sources and of course Napoleon Hill. We also have websites and you can subscribe to both podcasts. You can even send us a video, audio or text message. But of course, you'll have to head to the show notes, either on your phone or on the web, to get the links and stuff. I really doubt that you would pay me to read the URLs where you can subscribe, support, or leave one of those video or audio messages. And anyway, all the clickable links are in the show notes. And before we forget, the artificial intelligence or AI voices you hear in our work come from Google, Amazon Polly, and OpenAI like we say in the show notes. We just love what AI can do when lovingly crafted. Finally, you can find us on protmatch.com, matchmaker.fm, Podbooker and podcast guests where we consider guests and consider guesting on other people's shows. And really finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Ben Sound and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams, as well as from AI MuseNet. The sound effect credits go to Jackson Academy Ashmore, Kanusi G, Dr. Jekyll, Joe Payne, Everything Sounds, MK Play More Stories, ERH, Sand Emotions. Big Pickle 51, and just kidding, yes that's his or her name, all on freesound.org. Also, languages are the bomb. Paul.